our speaker tonight, Bianca, um, is here from Discord. Uh, my company, with Nightdive Studios, was one of the early partners for Discord. Uh, we use Discord for a number of different things, so I, it's really great that I get to be an, an evangelist for somebody who's, whose products I use on a daily basis. Um, Discord's best known for uh, as a communications platform, and we've got something like 8,000 people on our Discord server, um, which is a tiny fraction, a tiny drop in the bucket of the total user base of Discord. Oops. We've also been um, early uh, adopters of the Discord store, working with both Discord's Nitro program and also um, selling our, our stuff through the Discord store. Um, so it's also great, you know, I get, to, I get to say things about a product that I actually use um, as, as, as a, uh, an endorsement. Um, one quick story and then I'm going to pass the baton over to you. So Bianca was not scheduled to be the, the speaker. Um, Mason was going to be the speaker and somebody that I also know over there. Um, Mason had a death in the family. And so Bianca had one of the most difficult challenges that you can have thrust upon her. Um, hey, uh, we've got a presentation in Las Vegas uh, tomorrow. Hope you don't mind flying down and can you uh, work on a PowerPoint. Um, I always say that the, the character quality that I admire most is uh, grace under pressure. Um, so there you go. Thank you very much for coming down, for making time from your schedule to uh, come down with us and for prepping for it. And can we all give uh, Bianca a, a warm welcome, a round of applause, please. Thank you, Larry, that was very sweet. Um, as Larry mentioned, I am not Mason, although we do have very similar last names. Uh, my name is Bianca Ciotti. I'm a product marketing manager at Discord. Um, Yes, as mentioned, Mason unfortunately had a, a sort of a family emergency. So this is a, sort of a 24 hour notice presentation. Uh, it is something that I work on every day, so I'm pretty familiar with it. But uh, please bear with me if I'm not perhaps as eloquent as some of your other illustrious speakers. Uh, so first, um, in case you are not familiar with Discord, we are a uh, chat and voice platform specifically catering to gamers and also game developers. Um, <clears throat> Larry told me that I didn't really need to give the whole Discord spiel, uh, so I will skip that and just give you sort of a high level um, look at our platform and sort of the size and scale of things um, and give you a little bit of history about Discord itself and where it came from, because it really then sort of directs where we go in the future. Uh, Discord started in 2015, but we actually started working on it in 2014. And uh, Discord is actually sort of rose from the ashes of a failed indie game dev studio. Uh, it came from a team that was originally called Hammer and Chisel. And uh, in 2014, <clears throat> they released a mobile MOBA called Aurora Fate that was actually featured in like an Apple keynote. But just, you know, the world just wasn't ready for it, uh, as is the case with so many indie games. Um, and Discord was actually like an internal program that our development team put together while they were trying to put together their Final Fantasy XI raids. And they said, dear God, I'm sick of having to type in like a 21 character numerical code into Ventrilo every time I want to join a new server. There's got to be a better way to do this. Uh, so they created Discord as an internal tool. And then they were like, all right, well, game thing isn't working out. Let's try and make a chat app that's just way better than anything else that's out there. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of the birth of Discord. Uh, since then, Discord has grown into the behemoth it is today. 250 million registered users, 50 million monthly active users, 10 million concurrent, um, and 70% of our users use a mobile app, which is very interesting, especially to mobile game developers. And one third of our uh, mobile users also play console games. Uh, so we have a pretty saturated market of players across pretty much everywhere where people play games, PC, mobile, and console. So 
all of that combined, um, you would think that Discord is a very large team. Uh, for example, we're often compared to Slack, which has like 6,000 employees. Um, but we are staying true to our sort of indie dev studio roots. We're only about 151 people, which I know specifically because we just gave each other what our Pokemon is. I'm Goldeen. Um, so that's how I know that we're 151 people. So we're still a very small team and we try and keep things um, small and agile uh, as we scale, even though we've built this platform that so many people use every day. Oops. Oh, let me turn on the clicker. Ah, oh, very fancy, there we go. Uh, and this is sort of a high level of uh, what a Discord user is. Hopefully, uh, a lot of you either have a Discord server or at least participate on Discord in some manner. Um, but this is kind of a look at what our user base is by the numbers. Uh, and there's actually a, a really interesting GDC poll that came out just this week that um, is specifically targeted at game developers, which said that 50% of polled game devs uh, consider Discord as their community hub. Uh, and perhaps uh, that is because of these data-driven numbers. Uh, there's 14 billion hours of voice sessions just in 2018, 22, or sorry, 220 billion messages, text-based messages sent in 2018, 10 billion hours of PC games played, 80 minutes spent on voice chat and 30 messages sent every day, so our users are extremely active. Uh, and one half of our users uh, use Discord for over 10 hours a week. Uh, now most of our users uh, participate in Discord to play games with their friends, and also to, also to participate in game communities for games that they love and care about. Um, game devs, and especially indie game devs, are extremely important to Discord because, one, we used to be indies, so we totally get it, but also, two, our power users, our, our Discord users that are most active, that are using the platform the most, are generally passionate gamers who want to be involved in a game community. And that's where that intersection of independent game de developers and Discord exists. Um, independent game fans are passionate. They're playing lots of games. They want to be part of communities. They want to talk about the games that they love. Um, so while the platform was originally built for like World of Warcraft raids and like these major games, um, devs started using the platform as a, a home for their community, which is not what it was ever built for. Uh, and they started breaking it. <laughs> and we were like, oh god, we should probably optimize for this. This wasn't something that we ever planned on, and it really grew from there. Uh, I see Discord as, as a, a toolbox, basically. Uh, we have a lot of different tools in our toolbox that developers can use. Uh, you don't have to use all of them, or you can use all of them. But it's when developers like Mike Rose from uh, No More Robots start doing crazy things with Discord and like, say, using a wrench to nail in a hammer, or to hammer in a nail. That's when we're like, OK, well, Mike, maybe we should build you a hammer. And that's, that's basically how we build features. Uh, we come from a, a very data-driven approach. We see what our users want, and then we see how developers, and especially indie developers, are using the platform to do really awesome and amazing things that we never would have thought of, and then we build a tool so that it's easier. Um, Discord was always actually built with commerce in mind, uh, which is why the next evolution of Discord, which we announced uh, in October of 2018, was the store. This was the Discord store beta as announced in October 20, 2018. Uh, as you can sort of see, there's a, a store tab up in the um, sort of navigation bar in the upper left. Uh, it looks very much like a traditional storefront that you might be familiar with. It's got um, tiles at the top, and they play auto-playing videos. These are featured games, and below that, you can browse all of the games in the store. It very much reads like any other traditional storefront that you would expect. Again, this was always sort of the plan for, for Discord. We're, again, from an indie game studio, so the concept of building a platform where uh, studios of any size could distribute their games is something that was really uh, interesting to us. Um, 
but I'm going to sort of give you a almost a post-mortem of how our beta, beta has gone so far. It's been about five months. Um, we launched the store in October, and since then, we've uh, hit pretty much, I don't know, 20 features, some of which are listed here. Early access is exactly what it sounds like. It is an early access program where you can release your game in early access, sell to your community, and uh, continue developing your game until it's ready for full launch. Generally, early access games are sold at more of a discount. Uh, and early access games always foster communities that want to participate in development to make the game better so that at launch it's the best game it can be. Um, it was a fast follow to our release of the store. Um, early access did not release uh, originally with the store beta. Uh, but we very quickly saw that game developers were already using Discord for their early access games because that's an amazing tool for developers to gather feedback from their community during the development process. So obviously, it just made sense for us to then immediately release an early access program. Storefront optimization uh, is, again, a pretty simple one. And it's, it's a project that we expect will continue throughout the lifetime that traditional storefronts exist. It's just monitoring user behavior, monitoring dev feedback, and optimizing the store so that um, awesome, amazing, sometimes little known games get their, uh, get their five minutes in the spotlight. Um, and it, it's simple things like, should this be a video or a GIF? Or like, why are people clicking on this red button instead of this purple button? Um, Again, at Discord, we take a very data-driven approach to everything that we do. Um, and that was something that we played around with a lot during our, our four months of traditional store beta. Um, we also added access to over 70 games to our existing Nitro subscription model. So basically, um, previous uh, to our store launch, our users could pay $5 a month to basically support Discord. Um, and in exchange, they got access to animated avatars, animated emojis, the ability to use emojis from a certain server across the entire platform. It was a very successful product. A lot of our users, one, appreciated the ability to support us financially since Discord is a free program, but also they liked the customization options that made Discord feel more like home. Um, and so we built upon that successful model by adding another tier uh, to that subscription, where instead of um, $5 a month, you could buy $10 a month, and you got all of those things, plus access to a library of 70 plus awesome games uh, that you could play whenever you wanted, kind of like you subscribe to Netflix and you get access to all of that content. Um, so that's what uh, the Nitro Games subscription is. We also have played around with Nitro Perks, uh, which is basically, uh, as a Nitro subscriber, I would get access to in-game currency, cosmetics, items, um, just uh, as someone was mentioning before as I was talking JPEGs, um, in-game as a Nitro subscriber. So I could get, I don't know, 100 gold uh, in my favorite game of choice. And as a Nitro subscriber, I would have access to lots of those perks across many different games. We saw a really positive uh, reaction from our users to that model. So it's definitely something that we've continued to build out. Um, and uh, just an example of something that came out of our beta that we realized we weren't giving a lot of priority to this, and now we really should probably focus on it because this is what people are reacting very positively to. Um, gifting was something that kind of came out of the dark for us. Of course, we were always going to have gifting as part of our roadmap. That just makes sense, especially when you have a storefront. But um, what really blew us away was how popular gifting was to our audience. Uh, and when you take a second and you step back and you really think about it, gifting is an inherently social activity and Discord is an inherently social platform. So it really makes sense, but when you're you know, deep in the weeds and you're doing this beta, you would never think about how popular it would be. And the way that we implemented it was um, you basically can generate a hyperlink 
uh, that you can drop in your Discord chat or anywhere else. But if you drop it in your Discord chat, it um, creates an embed that you can just click a button to redeem. And um, it was wildly popular. 20% of game purchases on Discord were gifts. That was, I mean, part of it was the fact that it released just before Christmas, but also part of it was the fact that people just enjoy very easily being able to gift their friends things on the platform where their friends are already playing games. Um, commerce tools and tech, that one is pretty straightforward. We opened a store. We had to make sure that all of the tech behind selling things works, uh, which might seem very straightforward, but it's actually uh, a little difficult to implement in a way that's really easy for both the platform and the developer to use. Um, and there's, oh, I don't know, 50 different things that could be listed under commerce tools and tech that we tested, like how do you set up your store page and like what is the optimal way for a developer to set foreign price currencies, things like that. Um, so that was actually a very large part of our, our store beta, but it's a little less flashy than the rest of this. Um, we also experimented with timed exclusive content. Uh, we called them first on Discord titles, but it basically meant uh, we paid um, developers or studios or publishers uh, a set amount of money and then we would release their game on PC first on Discord and it would only be available on Discord for a set period of time. Um, this model is very popular among traditional storefronts. You may recognize it from the Epic Store. Um, if you're launching a traditional storefront, timed exclusive content is kind of how you bring people onto your platform. Um, that is something that we have recently pivoted away from after feedback during our beta, which I'll get into a little bit later. Um, but these are just sort of a brief list and a, a high level list of the things that we experimented with during our four months of store beta. Learning one, 9010. Uh, this was announced, I believe, in November of 2018, so a pretty fast follow. Um, after we launched the store at a traditional 70 30 split, uh, we knew that we were going to need to give developers more power over their commerce. Up until now, uh, it was a very manual process uh, for our team. And as I mentioned, we're only 151 people, which was a really great experience for those developers who we partnered with uh, for the store launch, but was neither scalable for us nor really optimal for developers at scale. Um, particularly indie developers. We were never going to be able to release content at the same rate as other storefronts if we didn't have a sort of self-serve capability where indie developers could then put their games up all on their own without uh, need of interference from us or assistance from us and they could just immediately begin selling. Uh, we didn't want to be a blocker in that process. So as we started production on self-serve tools for developers, we took a step back and really considered the industry as a whole. Uh, with our proposed self-serve tools, um, we were giving developers the power and the freedom to control their own commerce and launches while also reducing the burden on our team. And it developed into something that was much more manageable than this traditional storefront that we originally uh, sort of released into beta. We came to the conclusion that with that great power uh, that we give developers also comes great responsibility. And a 70-30 split didn't really make as much sense anymore. So we realized that we would be able to give developers 90% of the revenue and 10% would cover our development costs to keep upgrading features, to you know, maintain our SDK and, and maintain our tech on the side. And 90-10 is a pretty industry leading split uh, when it comes to store distribution. So it's pretty proud of that moment as a way for us to give back to indie developers because we were once there and 70-30 just didn't seem like a great split. Um, Self-serve also meant that we could take a step away from timed exclusive content. At this point, Epic was really digging down into the strategy and all the competition 
felt kind of bad to our users. That's the feedback that we heard from them was we want to be able to buy games where we want to buy them, when we want to buy them. Um, so we took a step back from doing timed exclusive content and it allowed us to arrive at our 90-10 split because it also reduced our costs at the same time. And so we come to the big pivot. Uh, this was an announcement that we made at the beginning of March and we're only on learning too. <laughs> so I'll dig down deeper into the complexities of what changed later, but let's take a look at why we made these changes. We heard from both users and especially from our developer partners that we weren't really leveraging what made Discord great, which was our strength of community. From users, we heard uh, both from direct feedback and from monitoring user behavior that they come to Discord to play games with their friends and to engage with the communities for games that they love. But they don't really need another store tab. Uh, they find games they want to play through their friend network from, I don't know, their friend jumping into a Rocket League game and then I say, what do you mean car soccer? <laughs> that sounds insane. And then my friend says, no, seriously, you have to try it. It's amazing. Um, so a curated storefront wasn't really what they were looking for. They have that elsewhere, and that's not really what they came to Discord for in the first place. From devs, what we heard, my game and my community still feels really separate, even though it's being built on this social platform that's specifically made for game communities. Um, in some cases, uh, those developers were happy to join another storefront, but they needed a better way to drive their community to their game that's not just another storefront link. And that link often then leads their community away from their community hub, which is actually a negative interaction for them. They also needed better ways to connect to their community that feel natural and appropriate for the users on that platform. So in early March, we sunset our traditional store tab as you saw just a few slides ago, and moved games commerce entirely into Discord servers. We created more tools and we improved existing tools to better connect developers to their community and gave them the ability to post updates from a news or announcement channel into players' activity feeds, which if you're not familiar with Discord, the activity feed is basically like your Twitter timeline or your Facebook page. It's where you see the updates of everything that's happening. It's where you land when you first open Discord. So we allow developers to post those updates directly into the activity feed of users. And we offered um, developers the ability to grant alpha and beta branch entitlements to community members directly in their server, which I think is a really powerful tool that a lot of game developers have been asking for for a really long time. So speaking more to that, um, our, learning, our third learning was that community feedback is key to a successful development cycle. Developers are using Discord much earlier in the process than we anticipated. Um, there's been a shift I've noticed in the game dev industry where People are building communities much earlier in the development process because they're using that community feedback to improve their game as it's being developed, which I think, and I am biased, so take what I say with a grain of salt, but I think that makes a better final product. Um, this lesson was pretty straightforward for us. Um, devs are using Discord at all stages of game development because community is important at all stages of development. I've heard a lot from developers, especially recently after GDC, that big streamers and big influencers playing your game isn't really the way to visibility anymore. Um, and that community is becoming maybe the most important success factor for smaller games. I would say it would still be really great for your game if you could get a big streamer to play it. I wouldn't discount that. And I would also encourage developers to really target uh, niche influencers, oops, did I go back on there? I did. Uh, niche influencers that are playing types of games very similar to your game. Uh, even if they have a smaller audience, those people are very powerful. But I would say that community is probably the most important um, 
marketing and visibility platform for small indie developers. So I would encourage uh, developers to incorporate community sooner in your game development lifecycle, pretty much from step one. And that's, that's what we heard from our developer partners, and that's why we built uh, alpha and beta branch entitlements within your server. So what that means is uh, once you set up your server and you have a store page, you can then uh, allow people to download particular branches of your game, and you can have as many as you want, I think up to 100, because that's the number of channels that you can have in a server. Uh, and you can grant people entitlement to these game branches just by giving them access to a channel in your Discord, so it's technically by role. Uh, and this allows you to very easily, early in development, get great QA. You can test features by having different branches. Um, you can give uh, super fans access earlier in development than you would, say, if you were in an early access title. It's a great place to create the beginnings and sort of the roots of your community because the people who are engaged during the development of your game, especially this early, are going to be really passionate about your game. They're going to be your evangelists. They're going to engage with other members of the community and get them hyped for the game. Um, so it's really important and something that people should really consider, which is why we made this tool. Um, uh, an engaged community leads to a better game, but it's a lot of work, and especially for smaller teams. So we, through making this tool, tried to make it easier for smaller game developers to have really good closed beta, alpha, and open beta periods using Discord's, enti Discord's entitlement tools. <sighs> the third learning was people don't really know how Discord can help them build their community. Um, there are three tools that I've chosen to highlight here, and I will say that we have a lot more on the way. Um, first is Rich Presence. Um, Rich Presence is an API that you can integrate into your game that allows um, detailed information to appear when someone is playing your game. So if I'm on Discord and I am playing Magic the Gathering Arena, uh, you would see as my status, Bianca is playing Magic the Gathering Arena, and you could click it and you could see, say, how long I've been in a match. Uh, you could uh, implement through Rich Presence the ability to drop an invite to just jump into a game or to a match uh, directly into Discord. So I could drop a link into my Discord and say, hey, I'm forming up a Rocket League match and then you can have people from your server immediately join in. So Rich Presence is a great way, one, to provide social visibility for your game. Uh, I see my friends playing it. I wonder what they're playing. I'm going to go check it out. I'm going to go download it. I'm going to play this game. Uh, and then it also allows your community, who is hanging out in your Discord server, to really easily jump into game, which is what you want. You want your community to be talking about I don't know, a new feature, and then immediately be able to go use that feature and try it out. Um, so this is one way that we've better connected community directly to your game. The second is server discovery. Server discovery is a new tool uh, that we just um, premiered at the beginning of March, which surfaces your server to your players and encourages them to join your community. So at the bottom of your Discord uh, server list, there is a little um, magnifying glass, and if you click it, it shows a basically a, almost like a traditional storefront, but a, a list of, of servers that you can join. And at the top, it's servers for games that you play. So if I'm a player of small indie game, uh, I may not know that they have a Discord community. Maybe I'm a casual player. I've never joined into a game community. If I were to go to server discovery, I would immediately see a game that I know and love right there at the top. And it encourages me to join in with that community, to be engaged. And for developers, that means that they now have access to that player that they never had before. You can post an update in your game build. You can put out patch notes. But now I have this person in my server. I can have a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with them. I can have a much more cohesive conversation with that player that before I wasn't able to reach. 
Finally, uh, this was something that I mentioned before. Uh, it's called Activity Feed News. You can now uh, set a channel in your server as your news channel, and you post things to that news channel, and then you can select Publish, and then publish those posts into the activity feed of not only the users in your server, but any player that Discord has detected as playing your game. So this includes players who are not part of your community. This is another way for you to bring in those players that are interested and active and engaged with your game, but aren't having a conversation with you. So this is just a very easy visual breakdown of all of the new features that we announced at the beginning of March and what exactly the gates are to those features. Uh, the news channel and the store channel. Um, so news is the thing that pushes to activity feed. Store channel is the thing that grants you uh, alpha and beta um, entitlement branch or branch entitlement access, uh, as well as later once your game is approved, the ability to sell that game. Uh, so that's under the commerce kit, which is a $25 fee just to make sure that you are actually like a game developer. Um, <laughs> And then you submit your game for approval. Uh, it goes through our approval process, and that approval process is basically, um, does your game contain uh, unsavory content? Does your game actually run? And uh, is your store page set up? Like, do you have a functioning store page that has a video and a description and tells people about your game? Okay, great, your game is approved. Now you can make money off of your game. You also get access to vanity features, so that's a custom URL. So instead of discord.gg slash numeric string, it could now be discord.gg slash my game. Uh, it also includes a server banner, uh, which is something right at the top of your channel list that is art that you upload that just makes the server feel a little more personalized, a little more like home. Uh, finally, uh, after your game has been approved, you can submit for a verified server. Uh, it is an approval process. We take a look at your server and make sure that it's a nice and happy place for people to be, that you have some rules, that you have specific channels, um, that you have some sort of moderation assistance going on so that your community isn't just basically the wild, wild west. Uh, and so once we've verified your server, is like, Discord has said that this is a good community for me to join. You will get a verified check mark and you will be placed into server discovery. Uh, and if for some reason you had not already gone through game approval, say you just aren't ready, maybe you're just starting to build your community before you even have a closed beta branch, that's okay. You can apply for verification and you'll get those vanity features right away. Uh, this is what server discovery looks like. Um, so as you can see uh, right now at the, I think there is actually, oh, there is a laser pointer and I ended up using it. Uh, if you look right over there, there's a, um, a magnifying glass right at the bottom. It's always going to be at the bottom of the list. Uh, if you click it, this is server discovery. This is where you can find new game communities. You can see right at the top, it's servers for games that you play. This is how you can capture those users who have not yet engaged with your community and get them sort of into the fold. This is, uh, although it reads a little bit like a flowchart, this is just some um, steps for monetizing and managing your game. Um, the basic pitch for why you should put your game on your Discord server is you're selling your game to your community where they already are hanging out and you get to keep 90% of the profit. Um, as, from a company standpoint, obviously we would love for you to distribute your game through Discord, but really we just want to make Discord a friendly and um, easy way for users to connect to developers around the games that they love. Um, this means that we want to give you, as the developers, 100% control over your storefront. This means that you can set up your own store page. Uh, this means that you can go at your own pace. You can be in uh, anything from not yet released, closed beta, open beta, everything, all the way to launch and post-launch. 
Um, the only time where we step in is really at the game approval process, just because we want to make sure that you are distributing a game that actually runs. Um, it also reduces purchase friction when you're promoting your game, your in-app purchase, or your DLC. So I'm hanging out in a server for a game that's not out yet. Uh, I'm really excited. I'm hyped about it. I've been part of it since the closed beta, and now I'm ready for launch. Um, on launch day, I'm sitting in the Discord server and chatting with everyone about how hyped I am that it's coming out, and then it's suddenly available to me right there. I don't have to leave my community hub. I can immediately continue to talk to people and just get the game right there. It removes that purchase friction. Uh, and it's especially good uh, when you're releasing DLC or in-app purchases or later content because your community in your Discord server is already engaged. They're playing your game. These are your power users. So these are the people who are going to be very interested in purchasing additional content, and it will be right there where they're hanging out. Finally, um, you can leverage Discord's unique social graph with gifting. Um, as I mentioned before, GIFs are hyperlinks that you can drop directly into your server. We are looking at additional gifting features that will do some really, really cool things. And it's something that we've noticed that Discord does very uniquely compared to other storefronts. Um, it's just basically an added bonus by being part of a social platform that is also distributing your game. This is what the store channel looks like now. Uh, this is a live screenshot of uh, Minion Masters, which is a, a game that we actually distributed as a first on Discord title. Uh, and you can see it looks exactly like you would expect a server to work, except right up there in the left-hand side, there's a little channel. It says Minion Masters right next to it is a little, it looks like a price tag. That's a store channel. And this is a traditional store page, as you would expect, it has auto-playing videos. It's what a user expects a store to look like. So when they click it, they know exactly what it is. And they can just buy it. It works for free-to-play games. You can set games to free if, say, you're doing a closed beta. Or you can charge money for it. And you will have a uh, store tab for every bit of content that you would like to sell. So there are a lot of developers who set up studio servers, which is totally fine. We built this um, new version of the store to be extremely flexible depending on what you want to do with your own community. If you want to set up a studio server and have 12 different games in there for all of the games that your studio has created, cool. You want to make a really unique server for the game because you're going to turn it into, uh, I don't know, a version of the internet by using different Discord channels, which is what Mike Rose did. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's cool too, then it would probably not make as much sense for you to have like 12 different games that aren't related to that single game. So if you want to create a Discord server for just that game, great. We want to support you in whatever way makes sense for you and your community. Uh, and this is just a brief overview of what the life cycle of game development looks like for a Discord server. So during the alpha, you can invite specific users. This is generally when developers invite like friends and family. Um, to grant temporary uh, branch entitlement. You do your closed beta, maybe you invite some more people, maybe you start putting your Discord link out on Twitter, you start assigning roles, giving those people access uh, to the game and getting their feedback in feedback channels. There's actually, we're working on um, integrating bots in Discord that can very easily uh, collect feedback for uh, Q&A and basically squashing bugs in your game. So you can do all of your uh, alpha and beta testing directly in your Discord server. Open beta, now you're just sending anybody access to the game. They get, again, temporary branch entitlement. So it's not like you're giving away your game for free when it finally launches. Um, you can just end that branch, and then they won't have access to the game anymore. You can then um, release an early access. You can sell your game. You can go straight to launch. And then, of course, the re-engagement and the long tail of your development cycle with in-app purchases, DLC, updated content, games as a service. We support it all. 
what dis or what Discord does really well with communities is engagement, but then also re-engagement. So there's a lot of games that just come out, people play them, and then that's kind of it. You lose contact with the developer. I stop playing your game because 12 different games come out on any given day. There's a lot as a player going on in my mind. Um, so Discord allows you to very easily re-engage those sort of users that have maybe fallen off the wagon a little bit. Uh, you can do this by posting news, content updates, especially with the new news channel, which reaches those players in their activity feed where it feels most natural. You can use commerce data analytics. This is something that we've heard from developers is a really big plus. Um, we actually provide top of funnel um, data, which is something that no other storefront provides. Uh, and I'll show you a look at what the actual um, analytics page looks like in a second. But this lets you know when you're starting to reach that point where you're, you're falling down a little bit and it allows you to start planning your roadmap so that you can get some spikes into your long tail. You can enable rich presence uh, to get more people interested in your game because they see their friends are playing it. They can easily jump in to a game. And you don't have to rebuild your community from scratch every time you release a game or content, especially if you build, say, a studio server. That allows me, let's say I'm Raw Fury. Uh, Raw Fury has a studio server. They know that people who purchase Raw Fury games are more likely to purchase future Raw Fury games because they believe that this studio produces quality content. Uh, so that allows me to build my community around my studio and then re-engage them when my next title comes out. Or if you've built just a unique game server, that's fine too. Um, you can engage those servers that have maybe lapsed and say, hey, if you loved Party Unicorn, then you might like Party Panda. Uh, and then you can easily transfer them over to your new server or just to make a purchase. This is what, uh, this is basically the flow of activity feed news. So you post it in your channel, then you make it look pretty, and it is kind of hard to see, uh, but basically anybody that's familiar with like WordPress uh, probably recognizes this kind of interface where you can basically make it look nice and SEO your, your news. Um, I will say that news is currently directly tied to posting a link, and that link can be wherever you would like it to be. So of course, I, being a Discord representative, would love for you to distribute your game on Discord, but if that's not in your plans, that's okay. The link that you post in your newsfeed could be to your Steam page. It could be to your blog. It could be to your email list. We want to support developers wherever they want to engage their communities. Uh, finally, this is what it's going to look like in users' activity feeds. It looks pretty, looks interesting. I, as a fan of Overwatch, would say, oh crap, there's a new hero. I'm really interested in that. I'm going to click it. This is what the analytics dashboard looks like currently. Uh, there is a acquisition and revenue tab. Uh, so this is the acquisition tab. You can see where people are coming to purchase your game. You can also see where they're coming from, and that's that top of funnel attribution that I was talking about earlier. Also, uh, this week we'll be adding two more pages of data, uh, an activation page where new players, uh, where you can track new players installing and playing a game, and then the reactivation of existing users. You can also see an engagement page, which has daily active players, weekly active players, monthly active players, and cohort player retention. Um, these are requests that we've had a lot from developers, and we will continue to build out new features into our data and analytics platform. Social visibility is something that I've covered a lot during the presentation, but this is um, sort of a, a peek behind the curtain at some things that we're considering developing. Uh, these are not things that we are at all promising will go live, but this is, um, this gives you insight into kind of how Discord works, which is basically at any given time we're working on 25 features that may or may not ever see the light of day. Uh, but these are things that we've heard back from developers, from users, as features they would like. And then we build them and see 
is this something that we think it's going to work? And then we release it into beta, and then we get the feedback from that, and then we finally fully release it. So rich presence, we've talked about uh, exhaustively, but we are considering adding a spectate mode where I can just very easily spectate um, my friend's game of League, for example. Um, we're also considering friend streaming, which is basically um, streaming a game that you're playing directly in a Discord server channel. So instead of having to go into a DM and doing a screen share and it only being available to like four people, I can create a channel, I can stream within that channel, everybody that joins the channel then sees the stream. Um, this is not going to be something very large if we end up releasing it that is going to say replace Twitch. It's really meant to be small communities, friends joining together to watch each other play games. Um, and again, this is still a feature that we're prototyping and seeing if it's something that we'd even consider releasing. Also looking for group. This is actually a feature that we used to have that we did not implement very well, and so we had to then roll it back. So we're going back to the drawing board, seeing how it would, bear, it would be much easier to find other users in your server to group up and play a game. Uh, this is just a quick look at what rich presence looks like. Uh, game invite links and details game info for in like the user status. Uh, and this is where in the user status where say a spectate button could live. Uh, Discord Nitro is something that I've mentioned a few times during the presentation. Um, creating an in-game perk is really what we're focusing on right now with Discord Nitro. Um, Discord We're not, we're just, ex we're experimenting with what works with Discord Nitro. It's something that our players really, really react positively to, but we wanna make sure that whatever we add into this membership is an, a value add for our players. So in order to make it a value add for our players, it's very simple. We just add in things from the games that they love. But for developers, we wanna make it uh, useful for you as well. So by Participating in Discord Nitro, you get a placement on the Nitro homepage, which is something that we've recently rolled out almost as a replacement for the store tab, which then shows all of the games that we have in Nitro and the perks associated with those games. And you don't have to have your game in the Nitro subscription model in order to have a perk. You can just have a perk. For example, like League of Legends is a free-to-play game. It doesn't make sense for it to be in Discord Nitro, but something like unlocking a particular skin or unlocking some RP as a Nitro perk would make total sense, but it doesn't require Riot to distribute with us. Uh, so it gets you Nitro homepage placement, gets you activity feed promotions, and it gives you Nitro badging, which basically is a, a little Discord notification over the game whenever you update it. And then just a brief look at our game SDK. Uh, our SDK is pretty robust, uh, but still very lightweight and easy to implement. Uh, it does voice cloud saves. It uh, connects you to our social features like rich presence. Uh, it also can handle networking and lobbies, couponing, which allows you to then discount your game, and of course, rich presence. And coming to SDK soon, TM, uh, achievements. Thank you guys so much for bearing with my extremely long-winded presentation. Um, if you have any questions that maybe you don't want to discuss to my face, which is totally cool, or don't want to discuss in an open forum, uh, this is my email. This is also my Discord ID. Um, I would highly recommend adding me on Discord because that is the easiest way to get a hold of me. Uh, but of course, you can always email me and follow me on Twitter. Um, I forgot my business cards in my rush to get out of the house, so please, please take uh, down this information. I would be happy to give it to you as well if you just need it, but I don't have actual physical business cards, so. We, uh, we refer to those as using your digital business card. My digital business card. Um, so thank you again for listening, and I would love to use the rest of this time for questions or just 
discussion, really. Okay, that was fantastic. You absolutely crushed it. And I am biased because I'm a huge Discord fan and everything you talked about is just is my favorite thing. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a lot more after this, but sure. I do want to ask here, you're talking about earlier in, in the beginning of the presentation how 70% um, of users use Discord on mobile mm -hmm. and, um, and the huge audience there. Is Discord uh, considering like some kind of implementation for mobile games through servers? It is definitely something that we're considering. Um, the mobile games market is a little complicated, especially with Apple's walled garden, mm -hmm. uh, but it's definitely something that we have our eye on and we know is a value add for both our users and our development partners. So yes, we are very closely considering it. Awesome. So as a developer, if I've got a game in your Nitro uh, batch, and then later on want to add some perks, is it, am I going to get more, here's sort of more money from you for those perks? How does it work in terms of the long-term relationship in the whole Nitro world and ongoing development? Sure. Um, so yes, it is generally an ongoing BD conversation. Uh, currently, uh, that is how our business model works is uh, devs are compensated with money or, I mean, I guess if they choose exposure, but generally money, uh, for perks. Uh, and then, of course, putting your game in Nitro is just a straight contract. So it's, it's all related to money. Uh, so you, you talked about verified servers as like after you set up a game store or while you're doing that. But can you have a verified server without distributing your game on Discord? Yeah, absolutely. Um, verified servers uh, you can apply for at any point. Um, generally, we do ask that your server or that your game be in some sort of playable state uh, before verification. That doesn't have to mean it's launched or available for sale, but just people can play it. Um, but we do make individual um, sort of allowances for that. A perfect example is like, Apex Legends, EA came to us and said, hey, we're launching this game, we're EA, you know that we're actually going to release a game, and we said, yes, of course, we will make you a server. Um, and so I mean, he touched on this a bit as well, but what is there a standard revenue split with Nitro games if you're one of the, you know, how does, how does money get proportioned between those 70 games you have? Sure. Uh, each of those contracts is different. It is not a standard 90-10 split um, because we give Nitro Games a significant exposure to our 250 million users. For example, the activity feed that I was mentioning before gets millions and millions of views. And so a promo unit there generally um, would then shift whatever the split is. Um, each one of those contracts is unique and it's a, a conversation with our business development person. But as we continue to expand uh, that portfolio, there is a possibility that there becomes a standard split there, um, especially if, you know, since we've launched a self-serve platform, if we um, down the road allow games to self-select as, hey, I'm interested in Nitro, or hey, I would like to add a perk just through self-service, I imagine that then we would probably deeply consider a standard revenue split there. I have a question. Um, you mentioned for a verified game server, you need to have the game in a playable form. What would be required for a verified studio server? Hmm. Uh, that is an interesting case. Um, I think it would just be that you have a game in a playable form. If you have five games in a playable form, that's great. Um, but we definitely have verified um, studio servers. So I imagine that the same rules would apply to them. Uh, but I can confirm that with our community team. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so like, so 
would you be considered allowing other software than just games on Discord, like, you know, game helpers or stuff that's tangentially related to, like, development, like, such, like, you know, like, Esteem does? It's not something that's in our roadmap now. Um, we have heard from, like, musicians who want to distribute uh, music on Discord. We, I, we've heard a lot, and, like, bot developers, obviously, on Discord would love to be able to monetize in platform. So it's something that's on our radar, but not currently a priority. Um, it's something that we're definitely considering at this time. With you being on the, the marketing side of the house, what are a few features that you're excited for that you haven't discussed today? <laughs> you're going to get me in trouble. No, um, no timelines. <laughs> let me think. Um, there are some things coming to the analytics platform um, that we are considering. I'm not going to say that they're definitely happening, but as I mentioned before, at any time, we're considering 25 different, different features. And whether or not they come to the platform is um, related to like a myriad of input uh, across our company. Uh, but there are some things that are in development for the analytics platform that I think many developers and server owners in general who maybe aren't necessarily game developers will find extremely useful. And that's as deep as I can go. So um, about features, what features haven't been, like, didn't make it onto Discord that you, you tried to um, implement? <laughs> sure. I mean, the one that pops into my head immediately was actually uh, the looking for group channel which was something that we implemented and then was used in ways that we never expected and in ways that we we found kind of a, a negative interaction for our users, which we then had to roll back. And so now uh, we've been through a, a few different iterations of looking for group um, that just haven't made it. And we'll, we'll continue to try and improve on it until it's something that we feel like we can ship. So probably that feature, because it, it just feels so perfect for Discord, the ability to, you know, it's basically like Warcraft trade chat, except in your server and you can find a group very easily. So it makes total sense. Um, we just have to find a way for our users not to break it or do bad things with it. Um, so uh, cross-platform voice chat in games is still pretty hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, there are some plugins and stuff that do this in Unity and, and not really so many in Unreal that handle it well. Um, does, is Discord working on integrating voice chat servers for games into Discord platform? So this is actually a, a feature that we used to have um, that we no longer have because um, it just wasn't the right sort of direction for Discord. We just that's not really the kind of software that we wanted to develop. There are plenty of companies who make this their whole business model. Um, and we tried it out and in the end kind of decided that it wasn't a great fit for where we, move, where we were moving forward. Um, does that mean that it won't ever come back? I have no idea. Discord pivots. All the time, that's sort of the, the beauty of the company is that it's really agile and responds to our users and market needs. Um, but at the moment, I don't think it's something that we're really focused on. Hello. So in terms of um, advertising tools for Discord, um, does it have a system similar to um, like Google Analytics where you have like CPM and um, CPC and stuff like that to advertise to new customers? No, that no. is not something that we uh, have implemented and will probably not be something that we implement. Um, we would really like to avoid um, 
are users feeling like they're only seeing advertisements. So every time we come up with a different way to promote a game or a server in our platform, we work very, very hard to make it feel seamless and natural to the user. Gotcha. Um, generally speaking, we just like to give developers uh, the ability to promote their game uh, for free because that's the beauty of our platform. And I don't think at this time that we plan on charging for that exposure. It's just not in our roadmap. Gotcha. Okay, excellent. That being said, if it's Google Analytics, uh, in our uh, data analytics dashboard, we do support UTM link tracking. So you can connect to your Google Analytics and track from there. Oh, boy. <laughs> but no CPC or anything like that. OK. Um, so similar to the you know cross platform, is there are you working on any solutions for like you know PlayStation or Xbox or you know using Discord on console? As you know, you said many of your gamers are on console. We would love to work more closely with uh, PlayStation and Xbox and any other console. Um, those are generally long conversations and they move quite slowly. Uh, it takes two people to have those conversations, but it's definitely something that we want to pursue and are passionate about and um, is something that we're actively working on. Hi, I, I'm, a, Hi. Uh, I'm, a so, I'm a solo Unreal Engine developer. Okay. How compatible is that with, uh, with your product? Uh, if you're specifically talking about the SDK, it's completely compatible. Our SDK doesn't have any like platform or um, engine restrictions. Uh, I have heard a lot of developers ask for a, a Unity blueprint, which we currently don't have. But like, if you are using a Unity engine, you can use our SDK. It just isn't as easy as just implementing a blueprint. But there are no platform, engine, anything restrictions to work with Discord. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, Did that answer your question? Well, mo mostly I'm just, I'm wondering if I would be able to release a game. Yeah, on absolutely. Your platform. Because I'm not as familiar with my Unreal Engine contract as I probably should be. I'm wondering uh, how, how deep those fingers are in me if I release an Unreal Engine game. Am I beholden to use, to release it through Epic? Or can I go over to someone else? I just, I just don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks like Larry wants to answer. I'm going to let go. So, yeah, we, uh, we're developing a game in Unreal. And we, there, there are no restrictions on there unless you sign a contract, specifically with the Epic Game Store, which is a completely separate contract than your Unreal contract. So I could do both. Awesome. Thank you. And to clarify from the Discord side, um, we are not going to restrict any, especially any game that goes through our um, self-serve platform. We're not going to restrict you from releasing anywhere else. Um, we did um, dabble with timed exclusive content. That might be something that we return to in the future, but for now, we're just, that's not our focus. So no worries from our side. OK, cool. Thanks. Yeah. So I, I have another question. Sure. So I've been very, very interested in the this, in this shift in Discord and uh, selling games per each server. Sure. Uh, but I was also you know, examining prior to this how uh, certain developers have a server per game, such as Mike Rose, who's probably my favorite sure. <laughs> favorite publishing person in the, in the industry. Uh, and then actually our friend Larry has uh, you know, the Night Dive is, is one server. Sure. Uh, and our studio servers going to be able to sell multiple games within them, or do they have to be multiple servers? Yes, multiple games. It uh, doesn't have to be separated by server. Um, you can sell up to, I think, 100 different content things. So it can be a game, DLC, in-app purchase. Just it's a, it's a channel in your server. You have up to 100 channels, and that's pretty much the limit. <laughs> OK, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. We should uh, cut the QA short and have some time <laughs> and have some time for networking. Um, 
I did want to ask, um, is, uh, had one person ask, uh, is uh, Scott Stevens here? Scott, would you uh, take the mic and make your community announcement? Scott, you can actually head up to the stage. Thank you so much for your presentation, Bianca. Yeah, that was absolutely. awesome. Is everyone give Bianca a hand? Around. All right, in the bright lights. Um, all right, uh, my name is Scott, and I work for an exhibit company here in town. Uh, we do exhibits related to um, movie IPs, um, Avengers, Jurassic World, um, Hunger Games, and Transformers. Um, and um, I have a sort of an offer for all of you. Um, I've been working um, intensely on uh, an interactive game, um, and we're doing the install right now. Uh, it was just announced over the weekend, so I can tell you sort of where it's at. Um, we are installing a new Hunger Games exhibit at the MGM. It's in sort of the restaurant row um, of the district inside the MGM, and we're currently installing it right now. And my portion of the project um, is an interactive game that we are in discussions with um, Guinness right now. It's likely that we are going to have the world's largest interactive display <coughs> times two um, because because of their restrictions is just one wall and I've got two walls of this thing so we are looking for beta testers um, and we need quite a few people because this is a group activity so um, I'm sort of you know spreading the word around to different people um, and so what I'd like to do is on the discussion portion of the meetup page here I will do a, a little link, and I would like you, if you're interested in coming and beta testing a Hunger Game-themed interactive, then email me, and I'll get you on a list. Right now, I can't predict exactly what day or time it's going to be. Um, it may be the case where it's like, you know, the next day is like, hey, anybody interested, come at this time, um, and such, but it, it should be pretty cool. Uh, I can tell you it's like nothing else I've ever seen. Um, and um, right now, I, I'm flying tomorrow to Montreal to um, go with the developers and sort of start some alpha testing um, of the game. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and stuff. So again, check the discussion on the meetup and send me an email if you're interested in being a part of the group that gets to test this crazy thing. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Scott. OK, we have one more quick little um, announcement, you can call it. Today, our food was very generously sponsored by uh, Next Gen VGC. Is that right? Yes. OK. So I'd like to give uh, them the stage real quick. Boom. OK, this is working. Um, all righty. Hi, my name is Kevin Irani. I am the, I guess we're licensed now, so you would call the CEO of uh, Next Gen Video Game Cafe. And I'm really excited because, I'm really excited to have seen this, huge, this, this whole community because one of the things that we're trying to do here is actually get video game design and development into the younger generation. That's actually why we're thinking of the name Next Gen. Um, what we plan on doing is through your, your participation, we can instruct and teach younger kids, mostly in high school, most likely, well, high school, yes, um, teach them about the, the what goes into gaming design and development. We're planning on having pretty much the uh, industry standard equipment, also on top of that video games that would be supported towards uh, competitive gaming. So we're trying to hit all aspects of what you can do in the video game industry. So, we're starting out, we don't have a lot of stuff. I don't have a pretty PowerPoint up here yet, but we'll come up with that soon. However, we have business cards. We'd love to talk to you. And uh, if you just want to pick our brains, we'd be happy to give you that, uh, that knowledge there. So. Thank you, Kevin. 
And the remainder of the event is just networking. We sell a ton of food out in the back, so please help yourself. Thank you all for coming so much. We really appreciate it.